In this video, I'm going to show you one of the best blog topic ideas for beginners to start a profitable blog in 2020. I'm going to show you multiple examples of very profitable, very successful websites that make over $100,000 per year in profits from completely free traffic. You can see one of the examples here, look at how many organic keywords they're ranking for, look at the organic traffic that they're getting, and all of the keywords and topics that I'm going to be showing you that you can write about have very, very little competition. Here is another example of another successful blog in this niche and also it's getting a lot of traffic and the keywords that they write about have almost zero competition. So if you start a blog in this niche today, you will have a very good chance of ranking your content on page one and this topic is very profitable as well. Hi everyone, my name is Greg Kononenko and on this YouTube channel I publish regular videos about affiliate marketing, blogging and free traffic generation. This is my usual series where I show some awesome profitable blog topics. So if you'd like to get more similar videos in the future then make sure to subscribe just below this video, click the subscribe button and also enable all notifications so you never miss my future videos. So hit subscribe and let's get into the video. The niche that I want to share with you today is the succulents niche. It is a very good, very profitable niche that has a lot of people who are super passionate about their succulent gardens, but there are actually not many blogs in this niche. So that's why it's an excellent opportunity for you to start a blog. And in case you're not familiar with the succulents niche, uh, it's not a very common term. Um, I actually, until recently, didn't really understand what succulents really mean. So this is all the plants such as cactus and all of the types of plants that you can see here that don't have a lot of leaves, they're all called succulents. And actually there are people out there who spend thousands of dollars on their succulent gardens. So it's a niche that's very, very passionate. And it, the people in this niche, they buy a lot of different things. They buy succulents themselves. They also buy a lot of products to look after their succulents, such as fertilizers, and uh, different things to make them look really, really nice. So it's a profitable niche. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to find keywords that have almost no competition in this niche. And I'm gonna show you examples of some very successful uh, websites in this niche as well. So the first website that I want to analyze with you in this video is this one here called succulentsandsunshine.com. So I already know I found this episode where the owner of this website, Cassidy Tuttle, you can see here, uh, she appeared on this podcast and she is the founder of Succulents and Sunshine, a thriving online business that has earned her six figures and grown to include a popular blog, a book, online courses and more. So this is a six figure website and I'm going to show you some analysis of this, but um, you know, of the keywords. But the first thing that I want to show you is the types of posts that they write about. So let's just head over to the blog and you can see that she's targeting various keywords such as caring for succulents in winter. If we open up this uh, blog post, you can see that it's actually not a complicated topic. All that she's got is just, you know, some text about uh, the succulents, a couple of photos, which you can get for free. I'm going to show you how to get these photos for free. There are ads. So on the right hand side, you can see that there are ads here and there is this big ad at the bottom. There are ads throughout the text. So this website is earning a lot of ad revenue from people who are looking for information about succulents, land onto this website, and then they will be clicking on these ads that are appearing all the way throughout the website. So just to show you how people actually find her website, if we start typing into Google caring for succulents in, and then you can see that Google actually suggests various uh, searches, so caring for succulents in winter, in terrariums, in Arizona, in summer, etc. So um, a lot of people, it just means that a lot of people are really searching for these kind of keywords because Google has already got them stored in their database from previous searches, okay? So if someone types in caring for succulents in winter, we can see that result number two is that website that we just looked at, succulents and sunshine. So after they, you know, a lot of people obviously would be clicking onto this result when they find this website and as they're going through this blog that's how they generate the revenue for the owner of the website they will be clicking on these ads okay and also they would be buying certain books because this website also sells books okay so you can see here book you can actually go and buy a book 
for 9.99 and of course there are a number of books and many of the visitors would be buying the books from this website as well so that's generating extra revenue for this website so let's take a look at some of the stats for this website in my favorite tool ahrefs if we look at it we can see that they're currently ranking for 33.4 thousand different organic keywords and ahrefs estimate is 82.4 thousand organic visitors per month so this ahrefs estimate says that approximately 82,000 visitors per month find this website through Google. However, as I mentioned in my previous videos, this estimate is a bit too low. It's usually two to three times lower than the actual website traffic that a website gets based on my own experience. So just to get a very rough estimate of how much ad revenue this website might be getting, we can take 82,400, we can multiply it by two because usually this figure here is a bit too low compared to the real figure and 164,000 visitors per month. If we multiply that by approximately 0.4, so about four cents per visitor that the ad revenue might be paying in this niche, okay, we get about six and a half thousand US per month that this website is generating just from ads alone. Uh, that is based, of course, on the assumption that the website is getting about $40 per thousand visitors. Okay, it can be a little bit lower or a little bit higher, uh, but it just gives you an estimate, all right? This is, this, is, this is an estimate based on other similar websites that I have analyzed and also based on other websites that I own myself. All right, so next, let's take a look at some of these organic keywords. So that we can see what kind of keywords they have actually targeted. So we can see that here are the 22.9 thousand different organic keywords that they're ranking for. So for types of succulents, this website is ranking as number one. For Portulacaria afra, it's ranking as number one, etc. However, we, what we want to do is filter out all of the keyword difficulty that is above five. We only want to see the keywords where keyword difficulty is maximum five because they're going to be the keywords that you as a beginner blogger, if you're starting a brand new blog, you will have a really high chance of ranking for. So let's get over here and let's put KD maximum five and apply this filter. And now we can see that still we have 11.8 thousand different keywords with extremely low keyword difficulty. And I'm going to show you a little bit more of the analysis, but this website is basically ranking as number one for virtually all of them. And let's take a closer look at some of these individual keywords. For example, here is an excellent keyword, best pots for succulents, 500 searches per month. And by the way, I recommend for you to create content on anything that's got over 100 searches per month. Uh, so 500 searches per month is actually really, really good. And if we look at the actual underlying search engine results, we can see here are the top 10 results along with all of the data for all of these domains. Uh, so what I'm looking for generally is, firstly, I'm looking at what kind of domains are ranking there on page one. Are they strong domains or not? And I can see that there is this website here, succulentcity.com, that has got AR of 7.2 million. Now, Ahrefs rank, just in case you're new to my videos, Ahrefs rank is uh, a really good metric. It shows you the relative strength of the domain. So the strongest domain like amazon.com, for example, you can see has got a score of 26. All right. So it's pretty strong. Uh, YouTube and google.com, they're probably like number one, number two, number three in the world. Um, some of my websites that I own are number 2 million, 5 million and 10 million. All right. So my websites are kind of towards the bottom. So the higher this number, the lower in the league ladder it is. So what you want to see on the front page is as many of these weaker websites as possible. So anything higher than 1 million is good news. And we can see that here on the, in the top 10 on the front page of Google, you have three websites that are very weak. So there is this succulentcity.com. It's got 7.2 million. Succulentplantcare.com, 9.8 million. And guess what? The position number 10 belongs to Expert Plant Man, 49 million. So this is a super weak website. Someone has probably just only started it. So it's a complete beginner website, I would say. Um, when you first create a website in Ahrefs, it usually gets a rank of something like 70 million. So this one has got you know no, li no links, no authority, and they're still ranking on page one for this awesome keyword which is of course a buyer intent keyword because you can put affiliate links to Amazon, 
Um, you can just, you know, it's, it's a very, very profitable keyword, this type, best bots for succulents. In other niches, it's very hard to find keywords as good as this one. All right, so this one here, expertplantman.com, best pots for succulents, 49 million. The other metric that we can see for this domain is this DR domain rank. So this one works a little bit differently. The lower it is, the weaker the website. So this is like the weakest score that it can possibly be. So this is really good news for you. If you publish basically um, any kind of a pretty good post on this keyword, you'll have a really high chance of getting there onto page one. The next thing that I normally look at when I analyze potential competitiveness of a keyword is how long the content on page one is. So let's take a look at the length of content for succulents and sunshine. So for the website that we're using as an example, and let's see how long their content actually is. So this is their article. I'm just going to select all of this. Okay, so it's selected. Let's count the words. It's telling me it's got 1,672 words which is quite a short article and that's really, really good news for us. Then I typically go through and do the same thing with several of the other results on page one just to see how long their content is. So when I analyze the length of content for this one, succulentcity.com, uh, I can see that there's only 1,246 words. So that's also really good news for us because that means that it will be quite easy to rank for this keyword if you write a long article. A little tip, uh, again, I've mentioned it in my other videos, but you can outrank a lot of the higher authority domains if you write content that is more in-depth and longer than the other content there on page one. So if you write an article that's quite in-depth, let's say two and a half thousand words, you will have a chance of outranking all of these other domains that are here on page one. This is exactly how this newbie website, Expert Plantman, okay, so they, they have horrible domain metrics, 49 million and one, so no authority at all. It's probably just a brand new website. If we open it up and we take a look at it, how do you think they're ranked? I know how, I'm gonna show you how as well. So if we select the length, sorry, it's just not selecting. I'm gonna start from here. Okay, and then if we choose all of the contents here on this post and go count these words, so this person, this author, David, he's published content that's two and a half thousand words long. And that is exactly how he's managed to get onto page one, even though his domain is super weak. So this just once again goes to show to you that this niche is very easy to get into and very easy to start getting those rankings on page one. Look at all of the other keywords. There are you know thousands and thousands of keywords for you here to go with one and a half thousand, 2.7 thousand, 250 searches per month, 2.3 thousand searches per month, and they all have zero difficulty. Here is another example, this keyword here, Sedum Adolfi. You can see if I expand and we take a look at the results, look at this, there's a website here that has got AR of 90 million. So this is an extremely, extremely weak domain. It's got authority of zero. It's got no backlinks at all. And it's ranking there on page one. I've also, I'm not going to bore you, but I also analyzed the length of content here for these other websites that have a strong authority. They all publish very, very short content. So if you publish decent length content to two and a half thousand words, you'll actually have an amazing chance of ranking on page one. Now these 11.8 thousand of super easy keywords is just for one of these websites. There are actually plenty of other sites that you can analyze. So the other example is this website here, World of Succulents. You can see they're ranking for 41.5 thousand different keywords. If we look at their keywords, you can once again apply the same filter and go to keyword five and it'll retrieve 16,000 different super easy keywords. And a lot of the keywords here I've compared the two they're actually different. So you can write on the first lot of keywords that I showed you before. Okay, there's 11,000 there, it'll keep you busy for a while. Once you get through those, then you can start writing on, you can start reverse engineering and analyzing um, next website like this worldofsucculents.com. Look at all of these keywords that they also have that you can start writing content on. So next, let's talk about the structure of the posts. The reason why I like this niche is because it doesn't have any um, difficult requirements. You know, for example, if you are writing about health or fitness, then often a lot of bloggers feel like they should be either fit or healthy. They should be able to take, you know, great photos of themselves or something along those lines. Or if you are 
uh, considering starting a blog in the make money online niche, then often you might feel like you already need to have some proof of some results before you can teach others how to do it. Okay. Uh, with succulents, it's just literally anyone can create content on this. It doesn't matter which country in the world you are. You can just register a domain and you can start creating content about succulent care because literally all you do is you just research this information, take a look at what others have written and then start writing the same content but just in your own words. Do not copy and paste anyone else's content. Uh, just do research. For example, if you wanted to create an article about caring for succulents in winter, then you would just research it yourself on Google. So the way that I do this when I create content is um, take a look at the results for this. Okay, caring for succulents in winter. You can see here are all of the different results. So I would read maybe four or five different uh, blog posts on this topic and then I would create my own taking the best parts from the other blog posts. I would write a plan for my blog post and I would then rewrite everything in my own words. Never copy and paste anyone else's content. Don't use spinner tools. They don't work. You need to rewrite it in your own words, either yourself or you need to hire somebody from Upwork or from a similar source to write that content for you and then publish it on your domain uh, in a similar format, just like what you can see here. The next thing that you'll probably want to take care of is some images. You will need to insert some images. Here are a couple of places where you can get excellent images for this niche. So Pixabay is the first one. If you type in succulents, you will get plenty of photos. Look how many photos uh, you can use in your blog posts. All of these are copyright free. so. Uh, you won't get into trouble if you use Pixabay images. The next place where you can get images is Flickr. So when you do a search for succulents, it'll bring up a ton of different photos and you can actually use the embed code on these photos. Let's say if you wanted to use this image here, you would open it up and check if they're offering for you to embed it. So see here at the very bottom of this, there is this arrow that says share. You can then click on embed and that gives you a code and if you take this and you insert it into your blog post in the code mode that will actually embed the photo from Flickr into your blog post. So it's completely legal. Uh, Flickr are providing this opportunity for you. You're not downloading and uploading from Flickr, right? That That's not always allowed. Sometimes you're not allowed to just download and upload photos from Flickr unless they've got the special license. But you can totally embed just using this official embed code because then it is still, the photo is still stored on Flickr, but you can actually use it on your uh, website in your blog post. It's still a very nice image. It's just come up, it's just gonna come up as an embedded photo from Flickr on your website. This becomes very handy when you need to find a weird sort of photo. For example, a photo for Opuntia microdasis. I bet that if I search for this on Pixabay, it's not going to have any photos or it might. Let's check. Uh, all right. So there are actually no photos. These are just sponsored images from Shutterstock for this keyword, Aponte Macrodasis. Okay. And Shutterstock is expensive. It's $200 a month. But if you search for this here on Flickr, then you will see that there are plenty of photos of this Aponte Macrodasis. And you can just use this photo. Do not upload and download. That's not allowed. Okay. Just use the share codes. You can just go share and then go. Okay. Well, actually this one doesn't allow embedding, but if you go through several of them, you will eventually find one that actually allows embedding. See this one, second one that I've tried, it's got this option to embed. So you can just grab this code and copy and paste this into your uh, blog post. Just use the text mode in your WordPress editor when you insert this and that's going to bring in this photo. And just in case you are not sure how to actually go about starting a blog, how to buy a domain, how to install WordPress, how to actually go about setting everything up, then make sure that you see my step-by-step -step video. The link is just in the description below. It's a free video. It's going to walk you through exactly what you need to do step-by-step -step to set up your blog and get started with blogging. Also, don't forget to check out my free course. Again, check the links in the description. There's a link for you to get my free training. I hope you enjoyed this video. This is a great niche for you to get into. Make sure to watch these couple of videos that I'm gonna put the links to here just at the top of the screen and make sure to subscribe. Just click that subscribe button just below this video or here on the screen to make sure that you always get my future videos. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.